الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا بأنتم مسلمون First of all I advise myself and all of you to have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I also advise all of you to maintain silence till the end of this lecture from one of the weakest servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I am inshallah going to expound and summarize the life story the seerah of one of the great alims of this world one of the great alims the modern dunya has seen Allama Sheikh Mukhbil bin Hadi Al-Wadi Rahimahullah It is necessary for the Muslims to read their history and understand what has gone before them For when the Muslims read history and they realize the sacrifices of their aslaf and the people who followed them with ihsan it will help us to act upon it and it will help us to try to be like them From the best of the seerahs is the seerah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions and when we read them we realize their sacrifice and after them all the people who followed them with ihsan and with perfection one of them whom we expect inshallah on the day of judgment to be with the shuhada wa salihin is imam muqbil rahimahullah let us begin and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me to conclude this his name was muqbil bin hadi bin muqbil bin qaida al hamdani al wadi al khallali he was born in saada in yemen and he lived among the people of wadiya that is he was among the people of wadiya he was born in 1933 in the initial years of his life imam muqbil rahimahullah was a zaidi shia the zaidi shia are a branch of the shia whom the scholars mention are the closest to ahl sunnah are the closest to ahl tawhid in the shia his primary education was in yemen under many of the shia alims there where he learned arabic grammar under various aspects of arabic grammar he also learned some parts of their aqeedah and he also learned some parts of their fiqh when he was around 28 or 30 years of age he went to saudi arabia to work as a security guard and as he was working as a security guard near the haram he went and sat in the various lectures of the scholars in the haram and he was inspired and the love he had for knowledge which was almost distinguished in his young years it rose up again in 1963 he joined the salafi markaz in najran which was run by sheikh muhammad ibn salih al husaimi rahimahullah he studied there for 2 years and then he left that place actually it is after uh, then he left that place after that after studying for many years as a security guard in makkah and as he was a security guard he went and asked the ulama what are the books that i have to study so they told him you have to go through the quran memorize the quran bukhari bulugh al ma'ram riyadh al salihin kitab at tawhid and fath al majid these are very huge and heavy books he would read them as he was a security guard he would work in the morning and at night he would study these books to the extent that he memorized these fundamental books it is also said that he memorized many books of tafsir wallahu alam then he joined the islamic university of madina at an advanced stage that is after 30 this is an encouragement for people like us people like me and people like my colleagues who are at an advanced stage and allah guided them at a later age into salafiyah into tawhid there is no reason in front of allah subhanahu wa taala for them to say that we cannot seek knowledge because we know that many of the scholars of the past started seeking knowledge at the age of 40 and imam muqbil started seeking knowledge seriously after the age of 30 and after that allah granted barakah in his knowledge then he joined the islamic university of madina where he studied the course of hadith subhanallah what a student he was whenever he would get the vacations 
for two months or three months, he would not go back to Yemen because he was fearing that he would lose his knowledge. So in the holidays, he also enrolled into the faculty of Sharia, the faculty of Sharia, the laws, the hudud in Islam, he joined that. And in the holidays, he also studied hadith and he also studied the faculty of Sharia and he benefited from the scholars who stayed back. That is, this man, Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah, was intoxicated by the love of serving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was intoxicated by the love of seeking knowledge, was intoxicated by the love of bringing his, back the people of his place to Tawheed. Then, he went and sat in the halaqahs of Sheikh Al-Bani Rahimahullah and he became one of his known students. He also sat under the tutelage of many other teachers, one of whom was Abdul Ghaffar, Abdul Ghaffar Haman Al-Hindi. He was an alim from India, a famous alim of hadith from India. Then he also studied under Sheikh Ibn Baz Rahimahullah and also under Muhammad Al-Sumali, the Muhaddis of Somalia uh, Rahimahullah. When he graduated from Medina, he, then he graduated from, from Medina in hadith and also in the faculty of Sharia as far as I have learnt. After that, what happened was that because Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah, he had an ustaz who used to write against taqlid, who used to write against blind following. So many of the people in Saudi Arabia who were used to blind following, they put this ustad of Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah into the prison and they also put Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah into the prison. So he was in the prison for one and a half months for telling that we should only follow the Quran and the Sunnah according to the manhaj of the Salaf without blindly following the Imams. After that, Imam Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah bin Baz who was the Mufti of Saudi Arabia at that time because of his wasila, because of his intercession, uh, Mughbil bin Hadi al-Wadi rahimahullah was freed from the jail. Then in 1979, a fitna happened in Saudi Arabia where there was a man called uh, Muhammad bin Abdullah al-Khahtani Laanatullahi alayhi May Allah's curse upon him And Juhayman Laanatullahi alayhi Both of them claimed that this man called Muhammad bin Abdullah Was Imam Mahdi And they went and they captured the Masjid al-Haram with weapons And then they were killed and that is a big story in itself Some people thought that uh, Some of Sheikh Ibn Baz's students were involved in that So many of Sheikh Ibn Baz's students Especially the foreign students were targeted And they were put into jail Imam Mughbil Rahimullah was in the jail for three months his passport was seized and he was deported to he was deported to Yemen. Once he went to Yemen, he faced strong opposition from the people who followed the Shafi'i Madhab, the Ismaili Shias and the Zaidi Shias. But then, with all this opposition, he started his markaz by the name of Dar al Hadith al Khairiya in the place called Dammaj. In the place called Dammaj. That is, Dammaj was the light which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala lit in Yemen. A uh, long time after uh, Imam As-Sanani Rahimahullah passed away. Yemen was filled with filth of shirk and bidah till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imam Mukhbil started the madrasa of Dar al-Hadith al-Khairiyah in Dammaj. In Dar al-Hadith al-Khairiyah in Dammaj, students from all over the world would flock to seek the knowledge of the Islamic religion. This madrasa was not a madrasa which would take fees. The madrasa would only take one fees. It would only take one uh, admission fee, one studying fee, one course fee, and that fee was ikhlas. That fee was sincerity, ikhlas. He would not take any money from the students. On the contrary, the students and the teacher, they would eat from whatever, whatever they could cultivate from their own hands in and around the madras of Dammaj, which about which we will study, we will read it, inshallah. In the 1980s, when Imam Mukhbil Rahimullah's dawah spread, and people got to know that he is doing the Dawah of Salafiya, Dawah of Tawheed in Yemen. And his madrasa had gathered around 700 to 800 students. Out of which 170 were families from different parts of the world. People from different parts of the world thronged to go to Dammaj to study under Imam Mukhbil. Just like, they, just like many of the Salaf who travel for the sake of seeking knowledge. Because the madrasa of Imam Mukhbil Rahimullah was special in that the only thing he required was sincerity and the only and there a man of 8 years of age could join and seek knowledge a child of 8 years of age could join and seek knowledge there is no age restriction you just had to go and sincerely sit with the ulama and study there in 1980s imam uh, in 1980s imam ibn baz rahimullah from his salary he would send money monthly 
to his student Imam Mughal Rahimahullah for the madrasa. And then once in every two months, the Saudi government would send him 15,000 riyal for him and the students. Then, the death of Imam Mughal Rahimahullah, after an illness of the liver in 2001, that is the cirrhosis of the liver, he got something like the cancer of the liver. Imam Mughal Rahimahullah travelled to Saudi Arabia, Germany and USA, but he could not be cured. On the contrary, when he went to uh, USA, he became more ill. He became more, he got more fever, more sickness because of looking at the fitna around. And he said that he wished that he would not come to USA, the America, because of looking at all the fitna around, it has increased his illness. Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah passed away in July 21, 2001. And his funeral prayer was led in the best mosques of the earth, Masjid al-Haram. And he was buried in the Al-Adil Cemetery near his teachers, near his teachers, the Shuyukh of Islam, Sheikh Ibn Baz Rahimahullah and Allama Muhammad Ibn Saleh al usaymin Rahimahullah. Let us read something about what Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah said about some things. Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah was living in a country which was also infested in the later times with the fitna of the terrorists, with the fitna of the Khawarij, with the fitna of what I want to say is Al-Qaeda. There, it is very sad that today there are some Muslims that say that Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah was from the Khawarij. He had the Akhidah of the Khawarij. What is the meaning of Khawarij? Khawarij are a group of people who consider it lawful to kill innocent Muslims and to kill the non-Muslims who are in the, under the protection of Muslims. The, the hallmark Akhidah of the Khawarij is that any Muslim who does a great sin is a disbeliever. Any Muslim who does a great sin is a kafir. So this was the Akhidah of Al-Qaeda. And Osama bin Laden was alive at that time. Osama bin Laden. So Osama bin Laden, the Khariji, he sent letters to Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah telling him that I, I, I want you to support uh, my jihad. I want you to support my uh, weapons, uh, support me by funding me with weapons and all that. So Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah said that you are a man who thinks more about jihad but does not think about knowledge. You are from South Yemen, build a madrasa in South Yemen that is more beneficial for Islam. But Osama bin Laden did not heed to this advice and he continued with his work. And then, um, okay. Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah also wrote a letter of advice to Osama bin Laden, criticizing him and admonishing him and asking him to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it had no effect on Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Many a times, when uh, the madrasa of Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah, it was surrounded on four sides by the mountains and it was surrounded by the Shia. So the Shia would attack there, not only by words, but also with swords, also with guns, also with rocket launchers. At that time, Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah, with his weak, with the weak assistance he had, of course the assistance of Allah is stronger, he would buy weapons for his students and they would fight the Shia. Many times, Al-Qaeda, which was powerful in Yemen at that time, they, would, they were the terrorists, they would ask to see, ask Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah, if you want, we will help you and we will attack the Shia and we will fight with you. But Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah, his ghira for the deen, his ghira for the manhaj, his ghira for Salafiya was so much that he, he did not seek the help of the Khawarij or Al-Qaeda in fighting the Shia. Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah followed the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Salafis, and he was particularly influenced he was particularly influenced by the ulama who were focused more on the Quran and the Sunnah uh, instead of Taqlid. His, his policy was that every Muslim should try to follow the Quran and the Sunnah and should, he should try to seek knowledge and avoid and shun blind following. As far as following the leaders and the governments is concerned, Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah had the aqidah that you should obey your Muslim ruler. And you should not revolt against him as long as he establishes the prayers, as long as he doesn't do anything kufr and bawahun, that is clear kufr. And Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah was also against the, the attitude of Ikhwan al-Muslimin that they would seek to protest. Always they have this habit of protesting, uh, blocking the roads, having programs against the government. Many of the people who accuse Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah of having the aqidah of Ikhwanis, having the aqidah of Hizbis, they themselves have the aqidah of Ikhwanis and Hizbis. They themselves lead protests. In whichever non-Muslim country they live, they spoil the condition of the Muslims by leading protests and wasting the money of the Muslims in organizing huge protests. Such people should seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before lashing the, un unleashing, unleashing their tongues against Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah. The right way of a right way of rectifying any government 
whether it is Muslim or whether it is the government of your own or whether it is the government of non-Muslims is that you should go to them and do something that is effective. You should go to them and speak to them and advise them nicely. That is the right way. Blocking the roads, making huge protests and wasting money of the Muslims in huge programs is not the solution. Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah, it is said that he criticized Saudi Arabia. Yes, for some of the mistakes of the Saudi government, Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah criticized Saudi Arabia. But later on, towards the end of his life, he repented from his uh, decision and he made a, he made an audio what I witnessed in Saudi Arabia which is available in YouTube and you can see that he repented from uh, whatever he said about Saudi Arabia whatever was his zulm upon Saudi Arabia may Allah have mercy upon Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah now I will discuss some of the stories from the illustrious life of Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah Imam Mughbil Rahimahullah his father died when he was very young so this boy when he was small his mother would send him to work but instead of going to work this boy would steal from his work. That is, he would not go to work. What he would do? Would he go to play? Would he go to make fun with his friends? No. He would steal, he would not go to work and he would go to the masjid and he would sit and he would seek knowledge from the alims. Shia alims, but he would seek knowledge. He would love it. His mother would scold him, but his mother would not curse him and abuse him. His mother would say, May Allah guide you. May Allah guide you. May Allah guide you. Why? Instead of going to work, he's going and studying in the madrasa. He's an orphan, nothing to eat at home. Uh, Imam Mughbil Rahimullah's daughter says that maybe when his mother said may Allah guide you the angel said Ameen that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Imam Mughbil rahimahullah the Imam of Ahl Sunnah in Yemen that is the reason why dear children try to seek the dua of your mother and advise your mothers that when you are angry give us dua like the dua of Imam Mughbil's mother may Allah guide you when she says one more thing about Imam Mughbil which I told you and I would repeat that he would never take holidays from his studies even in Madinah University about his food habits, Imam Mughbil Rahimullah would eat only when he was extremely hungry. At times, there would be times when in the whole day he would eat one khubus, one roti khubus, and he would eat half of it and keep it in his wall. He did not have huge cupboards like us, huge furnished bungalows like us. He lived in a house which was like a hut and there were holes. He would pack the roti or the khubus in a packet and he would keep it in the corner. When he would, he would feel hungry, he would take it and eat it by dipping it in water. He would say that if I get a tomato for uh, for curry, it is fine. Or if I don't get, alhamdulillah, that is also fine. Once what happened is that the students did not have food in the maj. Because there are many students, at 1.700 students, they did not have food in the maj. So Imam Mughbil Rahimullah, he had, uh, he, had, uh, he had an old small car. He sold that car. In that car, he would go to different places to do da'wah. He sold that car and he brought a truck full of potatoes. A truck full of potatoes for his students. And continuously for two months, two or once or twice or thrice a day, the students would only eat boiled potatoes for food. See, subhanAllah, my dear children. When you have difficulty for the sake of seeking knowledge, you will understand the taste of seeking knowledge. That is the reason the Salaf would, Salaf would they say, the Salaf would say, you will not get the knowledge of the deen of Islam. You will not get the knowledge of hadith unless and until you taste poverty. That is there with the students of the Maj. That when they went there without any AC, without any fans, in the hot scorching sun of Yemen, in the hot in scorching sun of Yemen, without, without, uh, without resources, subhanAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given barakah in their knowledge. So much so that some of the students said that what we did not gain in five years in our universities, I'm referring to the normal universities. Okay? What we did not gain in five years in our universities, we gained it in one year in the Maj. Then, <coughs> once Imam Muhammad Rahimahullah was doing da'wah in a Shia masjid. He was doing da'wah in a Shia masjid. And one Shia came packed with suicide bombs. And we came and sat in front of him to switch on the bomb and kill himself and kill the students and kill Imam Muhammad Rahimahullah. As he came close to Imam Mughbil and sat, he started pressing his button. But the button did not work. Button did not work. Subhanallah. See, students never fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are doing da'wah in the path of Allah. When your death is about to come, it will come. If this bomb had to explode and Imam Mughbil had to be martyred in the hands of the Shias, it would have happened. If he would have been afraid of the Shia and not done da'wah, many people would not have got guidance. So this man, the Shia came close to him and he pressed the button but it did not work. Then this man went outside the masjid and the bomb blasted outside the masjid and that man was killed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defeated him. Once he went to the one of the masjid where the masjid was packed with bombs with, at, at different intervals so that the masjid would fall on him. And then when he switched it on, only one or two bombs in the entrance blasted but the masjid, nothing happened to him. Alhamdulillah. That was his love for da'wah. And once Imam Muhammad Rahimullah he went to a Shia masjid to speak about Tawheed. 
and there the Shiites bait him badly and they sent him back. After some days, the people of the masjid told, "Come back again. We want you should. You, we want you to do dawah in this masjid." He did not say, "No, I will get beatings." He did not say, "No, they will bleed me." No, he came to the masjid and he did dawah in that masjid again. Rahimahullahu Taala. When in the initial days of his dawah, Imam Muqbil Rahimahullah was put in the jail by some of his haters for eleven days. They put him in the jail. The, okay, so what happened is that students would even come in the jail to learn from him. Many people would come from him and ask him questions about Tawheed, about Quran and the Sunnah. In 11 days, so many students came that the that the authorities there were fed up of having Imam Muqbil in the jail and they released him after 11 days. <coughs> about Imam Muqbil, it comes that when he was in Medina, alongside studies, he would also work in the free time. And in the night, he would sleep except but little and he would study. Imam Muqbil Rahimahullah, he wrote many books, Alhamdulillah. One of his beautiful books was As-Sahih Al Musnad Mimma Laysa Fi Sahihain. A collection, a four volume book. A collection of ahadith, authentic ahadith which are not there in Bukhari and Muslim. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire him? See, sometimes the words of your teacher inspire you to write a book. Imam Bukhari Rahimahullah says that once when he was in the Duru's that's of his, one of his teachers, I don't recall the name. His teacher said that I wish somebody would write a collection of authentic hadith. Imam Bukhari took it upon himself and he wrote the Sahih al-Bukhari. Imam Muqbil, similarly, Imam Muqbil Rahimahullah, when he was in the dars of one of his teachers, a great teacher, the teacher said a wrong statement. The teacher said that you cannot count the, the number of authentic hadith except Bukhari and Muslim are except but a handful. You can count them on your fingers. That is, the hadith which are not there in Bukhari and Muslim are authentic. You can count them on your fingers. And this is a wrong statement. There are thousands of hadiths which are authentic and not there in Bukhari and Muslim. So Imam Muhammad Rahimullah began writing this book, As-Sahih Ul-Musanad Bimma Laysa Fi Sahihain. And he wrote four volumes of books, four volumes of hadiths which are there in the other books, authentic hadiths which are there in other books but they are not there in Bukhari and Muslim. And I told you that Imam Muhammad Rahimullah's passport was seized and he was deported to Yemen. And they did not give back his passport. So people would ask him, how would you do Hajj and Umrah? If you want to do Hajj and Umrah. Imam Muqbil Rahimahullah, like, like, his, like his Salaf, like our Salaf Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, he believed in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He said, if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wishes me for, to, to do the Hajj, I will do it even without the passport. So then, after, 19, after the 1980s, when Imam Muqbil Rahimahullah became famous, so the Saudi Arabian government sent a special helicopter sent a special helicopter to Dammaj he sat in the helicopter he went and he did Hajj and Umrah without a passport Subhanallah so if you be whoever believes in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Allah will make the ways easy for him <coughs> okay now there are some people who say that Sheikh Yahya Al-Hajuri uh, Hafidahullah who is one of his students is uh, an extremist is in Khawarij let me tell you that Sheikh Yahya Al-Hajuri Hafidahullah is from the students of Imam Muqbil Rahimahullah and let us see what uh, the scholars say first about Imam Muqbil Rahimahullah and then if I have time I will also tell you what they say about uh, Sheikh Hiyya al Hajjuri Hafidahullah Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al Husaymin was one of the great alims if somebody does not if somebody is a student of knowledge for years and he does not know the fatawa of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Husaymin then it means he has not sought knowledge seriously with the authentic ulama Muhammad ibn Salih al Husaymin Rahimahullah told about Imam Muqbil tell him that is tell Muqbil that I consider him to be a mujaddid I consider him to be a reviver of the deen Sheikh al-Albani Rahimahullah said Subhanallah look at the people they say Imam Muqbil is a Khariji they say Imam Muqbil is a Hizbi actually those who say this what does Sheikh al-Albani say about them Sheikh al-Albani says so so degrading and belittling these two Sheikhs Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madakali Hafidahullah and Allama Muqbil who called to the Quran and the Sunnah and what the Salaf of Salih were upon okay and who waged war against those who opposed this correct methodology these words Imam Sheikh Albani says I'm paraphrasing these words come from one of the two types of people either he is a jahil or someone who follows his desires that is those who criticize Imam Muqbil either they are jahil and they are jahil they are jahil or they are someone who follow desires. They are, they are Ahlul Hawa, people of desires. They don't follow the Quran and Sunnah in true sense. Okay? And Imam Albani says, Rahimahullah, if he is jahil, he can be taught. He can be taught. But if he is someone who follows his desires, 
then we seek Allah's refuge from the evil of this person. We all ask Allah to guide him or break his back. Allama Albani said this in his uh, audio series, Silsilatul Huda wa Nur. Silsilatul Huda wa Nur. So, we also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whoever criticizes Imam Muhbil Rahimahullah unjustly with injustice, may Allah guide him, may Allah guide him, or may Allah destroy him, may Allah break his back, may Allah open his face in the, of the people, in the public. So, the ulama, the ulama, Sheikh Uthaymin, Allama al-Albani rahimahullah, and Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al-Matkhali, uh, all of them praise Imam Muhbil rahimahullah. They were the people who were close to him. They know that he did not have any affiliation with the Qawarij. As for what happened to the madrasa, in 2004, when Sheikh Hiyya al-Hajuri, hafidahullah, was one of the best students of Imam Muhbil, he was the uh, Sheikh al-Hadith in Darul Hadith, Dammaj, Dammaj was attacked by the Shia. Dammaj was attacked by the Shia. And after a heavy fighting, the people of Dammaj could not continue. They had to surrender Dammaj. And for the safety of their lives, they had to leave Dammaj. Subhanallah. What a beautiful sight. When the, the when the students of Dammaj were leaving the, the leaving the Dammaj, what a beautiful sight. They did not have wealth. They did not have a lot of equipment. They did not have electronics with them. The only thing students had was trucks and trucks of books. Trucks and trucks of Arabic books, subhanallah. In 2004, the Maj was ransacked by the Shia and it was captured by the Shia. After that, the students of Sheikh Muhbil, that is, and the students of Sheikh Iyai al Hajuri, they went to different parts of Yemen and they did their da'wah there. And uh, as of now, Sheikh Iyai al Hajuri, Hafidahullah, is teaching, if I'm not wrong, in Masjid al Taqwa in Mecca. And he has been given the permission by the Saudi government and he has also been given the taskiyah by Mufti Abdul Aziz Ali Sheikh of Saudi Arabia. May Allah increase him in knowledge and may Allah increase the barakah in his knowledge and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala silence the people who criticize him. Now, okay, now there are some people who there are some people you know who do not know anything about knowledge and they say about this about them. I advise all my students to look at the lecture from where I got a lot of inputs from where I got the life of Imam Muhbil Rahimahullah by Ustaz Mustafa George Hafidahullah. He gave a very good one and a half hour lecture which is better than what I have said now about Imam Muhbil Rahimahullah. Inshallah you can get inputs from, that, inputs from that and you can also read the autobiography of Imam Muhbil which he wrote about himself, about uh, his life. Okay, we, and I ask all of you that, with, that I ask all of you to remember that whenever some ignorant, whenever some ignorant, some fool, some safi, some idiot who has not read any books of knowledge, criticizes, criticizes the Maj, criticizes the students of the Maj, or criticizes Imam Muhbil, or criticizes Sheikh Hiyal Hajuri, unjust, unjustly. If they have some mistakes, you can authentically prove it, go and advise them, or you can prove it authentically, that is fine. Every human being has mistakes. But telling that they are the Khawarij, or they wear the Thawb and the Turban, they are wearing the dress of the Arabs, so they are out of the way. They just want to seek knowledge, so they are mad. They say that co-education is haram. Subhanallah, all the things that the people of Dammaj say, all the things that the students of Dammaj say, all the things that Yahya al-Hajuri or his Ustad Imam al-Muqbil rahimahullah said, you will find this in the Al-Ifta website of Saudi Arabia. You will find this, that this is the manhaj, this is the asal manhaj of the salaf. You will find it on the website of Saudi Arabia, aliftah.net. So what they're saying is not strange. What they're saying is come, similarly from what Imam Muqbil is saying, has come from his teachers Al-Albani, Ibn Baz, Ibn Thaymin Rahimahullah Ibn Thaymin Rahimahullah So I advise, I advise all of you and advise the listeners to read what Imam Muhbil Rahimah was actually and also to read the books of the Salaf so that you understand what the Salafi methodology is Salafi methodology is not what I said, you said, he said it is the Quran and Surna upon the manhaj of the Salaf and you can learn this from the authentic ulama who have passed away who passed away and who are known for their Salafi methodology. I think this is enough. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me if I have committed any excesses in praising Imam Muhammad rahimahullah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for any of my errors. Errors. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us an increase in knowledge. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us like our Salaf and to excel in knowledge and amal and action and in dawah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.